voting that we use as a system, both in Rhode Island and nationally, is like inheriting an old house where we have to decide as a community if we want to look at the house and see it for what it is or we accept it for what it is or we choose to change it to what we want it to be or what it could be do we go into a room and see a cracked ceiling or do we see it as the potential to rebuild do we open up a wall that has mold in it or do we just let it stay there so when we think about voting i want you to think about it more like that as a system that we use a system that is complex because it has been built upon previous systems and other systems and it constantly is evolving and iterating and it is a system yes but it is a human system what is the system's purpose what is its outcome what are we concerned about as the community what do you want your voting system to look like in Rhode Island as a part of your Rhode Island community. And remember, when we start talking about changing a home, it's all about your perspective. And voting is no different, right? So when we talk about a human system, we are all conditioned based on our experiences. So when we talk to others and we try to understand what they are experiencing, it's important so that we can work together to really build the house better. So not only do we have to recognize our own perspective, but the perspective of others. And then a lot of this discussion that we were having based on the panel was about equity. It was about what does it mean of equality versus equitable? What does this mean if we talk about access to everyone? How does that work? How will we achieve that? Well, first of all, let's reflect a little bit nationally on the level of what happened in 2020. So potentially in history, it was the most secure election this past season. I know that it doesn't seem possible, but it really was. And we had the most voters ever, but not necessarily in Rhode Island. And in terms of the methods for execution, especially in Rhode Island, we had more adaptable early voting. We had much larger percentages of vote by mail and we had in-person voting. And we did all of that during a unprecedented pandemic. And not only did we do it in Rhode Island, but we did it nationally. But what does that mean? We had more locations that couldn't be used. We couldn't use senior centers to open in-person voting. We couldn't. And we had decreases in schools and churches, but we also had increases in community centers and increases in government or other government, non-government buildings. But we did see an increase in lines. Our lines were very similar, not necessarily in Rhode Island per se at all locations, but when we talk about it in a national setting, they, we had lines that were very similar to 2008. So what is happening? When we have a decrease in locations, then we have an increase in processes. We're going to have also an increase in turnout in this particular election, which also means increasing in lines. So we need to think about how all of these parts play a role together. And what if we had data in Rhode Island to help make those decisions better. One of the discussions was we had issues with finding these locations. We had issues not only with finding them, but approving them. We had two locations in one community center, or did we have one community center have multiple locations that got combined into a vote center? What if we could use the data that was available in the ubiquitous technology and we could help use engineering tools to understand these numbers and help make data-driven decisions on which would be better and why. So what does that mean? What does that mean in terms of in-person voting? What does that mean? What would it even look like if we had a turnout of 70%, 80%, 90%, or the 
the holy grail of 100% turnout? What would that look like from a systems perspective? What would that mean from your perspective? as a part of the human system or your neighbors or people across the state? What would it look like if you could vote anywhere in your city and town in Rhode Island? What would it mean that if you were a resident of Cranston, you could just vote anywhere in Cranston and that it didn't have to be just in that one particular location? We did that in the presidential preference primary this year. What if we could take that and do that all the time or better yet, what if you could vote anywhere in Rhode Island? Anywhere. And it didn't matter if you wanted to vote by mail or if you wanted to vote anywhere in person. So when we talk about these solutions, we also have to consider what it means for funding. When we think about the people who make these decisions, our election workers, our superheroes of 2020, along with all of our healthcare workers, we have to think about funding in these parallel decisions. We have to think about what that means. If, if that election worker knows that there's only one time off funding, what are they gonna use that for? How are they gonna use it? They're gonna make it for one-time purchases, not purchases that is has to be reused over and over and over again because there's no substantial funding in terms of consistent behavior. So what does that mean? That means that if we have in-person voting, we have accessible, physically accessible buildings. How could, do, do we get a new ramp in that building to make it more accessible? Or do we change the system so that that location that's no longer a compliant location for all accessible persons, do we then change it so that we go to a location that is for everyone and everyone can go there? So when we start talking about it, it's not necessarily what we could have in the future. It's what we want in the future so that as a community of Rhode Islanders, we can come together to make decisions that are better as a system, not as only one part of a system, but know how that trickles in or has impact in the rest of the system. And also in Rhode Island, we have issues but there are these issues everywhere. So if we come to a solution as a community, how can we take that and then solve them, but then also share them with the community nationally? So those are my reflections. Thank you very much for your time and happy holidays.